Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today we'll answer the question, what is a CPK, also referred to as the Capability Index? All right, keep us in mind, should you ever need any ASQ certification preparation training, we've been doing that for over 20 years. We've become very good at it, and we'd uh, be very honored to have you as a student. All right, back to the question, what is a CPK? CPK is a statistic for capability studies. As you'll recall, a capability study is the probability of meeting specifications. And so uh, it's just another way of doing it. We've covered the Z statistic before and uh, the Z table and all that. This is very closely related to the Z statistic, as you'll find out. But in a capability study, you always need upper and lower spec limits. You need an average of the uh, process distribution and the standard deviation of that distribution. Once you have those numbers, again, there's only four numbers, so it can only be so complex. Uh, upper spec limit, lower spec limit, average, standard deviation. Those are the four, only four numbers you will need to calculate the whole family of uh, CPK statistics. Okay. In that family of CPK statistics is a CP upper, a CP lower, a CPK, and a CP. I'll explain all of those to you. Here's the formula for CP upper. Upper spec limit minus average divided by three sigma. There's my upper spec limit, so I'll plug that in there. My average was 64.52, there it is. And my sigma value there was 3.8. And there I put it in. Now you just number crunch that, and it gives you 1.36. So CP upper in this case is 1.36. Now the problem is, what does that mean? Okay, we, we just calculate, it's a very easy calculation, but what does a CP upper of 1.36 mean? It's very important you understand that. Uh, in the end, the CP upper of 1.36 is nothing more than a unit of length. It's the distance from the average to the upper spec limit. Again, a distance. The unit of length of measure is three sigma units instead of three sigma units. It's very similar to measuring in feet or yards. As you may already know, there are three feet in one yard. Similarly, there are three sigmas in one CP unit. Whether you're talking about CP upper, CP lower, CPK, CP, that's what they all mean, uh, the number of three sigma units. We're measuring not in sigma units now, we're measuring in three sigma units. Okay, that's what uh, CPK is all about. They decide to measure in three sigma units. I know a lot of people measure in sigma units. I get that, but in CPK, we measure in three sigma units. In other words, if I have a specification limit that is three sigmas away from the average of the distribution, I could say the specification is one CP upper unit away from the average. What does one mean? One three sigma unit. That's what it means. Remember, three sigma equals one CP upper or lower or whichever, whatever CP unit you're looking at from the CPK family. Of course, the same relationship holds true for CP lower. CP lower is the distance to the lower specification limit from the average, I should say, uh, because we're always measuring distance in statistics and we always measure from the average. So I should have put that in there. CP lower is the distance to the lower specification limit from the average, while CP upper is the distance to the upper specification Remember, we're always measuring in units of three sigma. So back to the question, what does CP upper of 1.36 mean? What it means is that the upper specification limit is 1.36, three sigma units, away from the distribution average. You could also say it's 136% of the three sigma unit. Whichever way you decide to look at it is fine. So now I draw that out. Here's a CP upper of 1.36. By the way, if I want to convert that to the number of sigmas, which is the Z statistic, I just need to multiply that by 3. So I did that 3 times 1.36 equals 4.08 sigmas. So a CP of 1.36 means the same exact thing as 4.08 sigmas. Well, why do they do that? Why don't they just do everything in sigma units instead of making, I don't know, why do some people measure in feet and yard? doesn't matter. It ends up being different numbers but the same distance. But if they called a football game in feet, I guarantee you everyone would be hashtagging the announcer saying, you know, blah, 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 curse, curse words and everything else going on here. Okay, they'd be very upset. Well, does it matter? Well, it matters to some people. 
So some people like to measure distance in three sigma units. Some people like to measure it in sigma units. Doesn't matter. They all both uh, end up the same in the end. However, CPK statistics is designed by manufacturers for manufacturers. So it's uh, more often used in manufacturing than the Z statistic, at least for capability studies, just so you know. Why? Because you'll find out that uh, the Z only had Z upper, Z lower. CP has CP upper, CP lower, CPK, and CP. Gives you a lot more information on your processes. So that's why they use these uh, CPK statistics and capability studies probably more often than they use the Z statistic. But as you can see, they're related by a factor of three. So they're easy to convert over if you ever need to. So there's the picture of 1.36 CP upper which is 136% of three sigmas, if you want to look at it that way. Or you can see it, 1.36 three sigma units. Means the same thing, but whatever works for you. Okay, now let's do CP lower. Remember, same type of thing. Uh, CP upper was from the average to the upper spec limit. CP lower is going to be the distance from the average to the lower spec limit. So let's check that out. There's the formula, average minus lower spec limit divided by three sigma. And uh, we already know the average was 64.52. The lower spec limit was 60. Sigma was 3.8. Plug it in, you get 0.396. What does that mean? It means the distance from the average out to the lower spec limit is only 39.6% of the three sigma unit. Or you could say 0.396 uh, of the three sigma unit, whatever works for you. There I go, I drew that in there. There's the CP lower of 0.396. I multiplied that by three, which is 1.188 sigmas, and placed it right there. I've combined the two so you can see the whole picture. What do we see? It's not centered. So you're gonna get a lot more scrap below the lower spec limit than you are above the upper because it's not centered. Okay, that's problematic for many processes. So I'll give you a second, just look that over. We already calculated that, 1.36 CP upper, CP lower 0.396, remember it's just a distance. So 0.396 means you're much closer to your lower spec limit than you are your upper spec limit. So in this example, CP uh, upper 1.36, CP lower 0.396, 136% of a three sigma unit, point, or 39.6% of a three sigma unit going the other way. So what would CPK equal in this example? Good question. CPK is the weak link, okay? Let's say you're crossing a bridge and you're going across this chain link bridge and there's about 300 feet below the bridge, you don't wanna fall, and you look at the bridge and think, it looks a little rusty to me. So you go back to the owner and say, hey, I need to know the safety factor of this bridge. They say, "What's your? how much do you weigh? You give them your weight and they go through and they go, hey, that first link gives you a safety factor of 20. So you're thinking, hey, this sounds pretty good to me. Then they look at the second one as uh, 10, the next one is eight, the next one is 30, so on and so forth, but they're all very healthy links. You're feeling pretty good. Till he gets to the last one. This takes you hours to go over all these safety factors. And the last one, he says, oh no, it's 0.85, certain death. Okay, so what do you really want to know? All you, next time you go back, you'll ask the guy, what's the weakest link? I don't need to know all thousand links, just give me the weakest link. CPK is the weakest link, okay? And uh, that makes it easy for purchasing people to call a supplier and say, hey, what's your CPK? They don't, that's all they need to know, just the CPK, what's your weakest link? Link. In this case, of course, the CP upper was 1.36, CP lower is 0.396, the weak link here is 0.396, so we call 0.396 the CPK. CPK is the weakest link, the one that has the lesser magnitude of CP upper and CP lower. So hopefully that uh, makes sense to you. What would the CPK equal if the average of the distribution was centered? So we took this average and we centered it so the distance between the upper, the average and the upper spec limit and the average and the lower spec limit were equal. The average is centered between the specs. For many processes, that's what you want it to be. So what would the CPK be if it was centered? Well, all we have to do is take the average of CP upper and CP lower and that will answer the question. If we center this in between the specs, it'll be a CP upper and a CP lower of 0.878. They'll be equal, why? Because it's centered, so of course they're going to be equal. 
And if you multiply that by 3, that means there will be 2.63 sigmas to the upper uh, spec limit and 2.63 sigmas to the lower spec limit. Very good. And the average of those two is the CP. So now what have we covered? CP upper, CP lower, CPK, the weakest link. CP, the average of CP upper and CP lower, which tells you what CPK would be if the process was centered, which is usually optimal for many um, uh, manufacturing type processes. Okay, so that's it. We've went over all those CP up or CP low or CPK, CP. Hopefully you understand that. And uh, this is the formula, by the way, for CP. You can either take the average of CP upper and CP lower, or you can go upper spec limit minus lower spec limit divided by six sigma gives you the same answer. I know mathematically that doesn't look like it's the average, but it is. They'll always equal one another. The CP, again, the CP will tell you your optimum CPK um, if the process is centered. The CP assumes a centered process. All right, hopefully you learned something new today that will help you in your career. Remember, if you need any ASQ certification preparation training, please keep us in mind. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.